Have you ever heard of the Phoenix Program? Yeah, talk a little bit about that. Okay, the Phoenix Program, nobody knows for sure, because, well, until they open the papers, nobody ever will know, but it's projected somewhere between 20 and 40,000 Vietnamese were killed over the Phoenix Program. The Phoenix Program was to set out and seek uh, uh, North Vietnamese leaders who were South Vietnamese citizens. Yeah. Uh, yeah, or uh, assassinate uh, uh, traitors, uh, Vietnamese traitors. Traitors to the government of South to, Vietnam. To the government of South Vietnam. Yeah. And, and South Vietnam did this a lot, and the American government had a great deal on it. And uh, a lot of times you didn't trust the South Vietnamese, and especially their linguists. So this is where I came in. Yeah. So they would use me as a linguist. Hey, sit down. <laughs> Stay. Uh, so they would use me, and and so I had some interesting tales about the Phoenix program. Uh, they would use you. How 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 would they use you to? Okay, the, the first Phoenix time program? I went out on the Phoenix program, I didn't even know what it was called at that time. Yeah. They. they I, if, if a group needed me, they just sent for me. So I went out several times to different groups. That's the first and only time I saw them. Yeah. So I went out with this one group. Um, they were American group, and they were designated to capture a North Vietnamese uh, tax officer because the North Vietnamese taxed the South Vietnamese. Right, yeah. And so we were commissioned to capture him. And they said, oh, well, we know where he is and everything. So that's fine. So they sent us in in helicopters and we landed a couple of clicks away where they wouldn't hear us and we marched in. Yeah. And the jungle and surrounded, it was a little village. Uh, wooden hamlets, thatch roofs, everything you think of a Vietnamese village, that was a Vietnamese village. Yeah. And so we, we marched in and fortunately it didn't have, it, it was what we call a a communist village because people there were friendly to the communists and that's where the tax collector was staying they said and so um, and so we marched in well luckily the communists you could not be communist enough and a lot of times they would take their people and they would have all night training sessions on how good communism was and how it functioned and this was quite common. And mm -hmm. sometimes they would berate people. Somebody didn't fill his rice supply that day. And so everybody in the village would berate that person for five or ten minutes each. On, for not being sufficiently for not being loyal to the cause. Yeah, right. right. Yeah. And so we were lucky. They'd done that the night before and everybody was just sleeping in. Yeah. They didn't have any guards up for anybody. So we just went in the village. And then as soon as some of the guys woke up and realized we were in the village, well, then the shooting started. Well, I'm telling you, I don't care where you are in a bamboo village, those bo bamboo do not stop bullets. <laughs> and so that was, my, that was my first experience with live fire exercise. Wow. So I was being pretty dang careful. And so... Uh, now, we, did you engage in the firefight yourself, or what was your response to the fire? My My mission was to capture the tax commissioner and interrogate him, make sure we got the right guy. That was my, those were my orders. Yeah. My orders were not to play John Wayne. Yeah. And like I said, this is the first live five exercise I was in. So I was pretty, you know... Mm -hmm. I was a newbie, and everybody knew it, and they yeah. they knew I was newbie, and they knew I wasn't supposed to go in and be John Wayne. So yeah. everything was fine. I I stayed low, and I didn't get up front, but things were happening all the way around me. And then we got the captured the women and the children and the men, and we separated them, and yeah. and then. Uh, I was interrogating some of the men, trying to find out where the tax commissioner were, and they weren't weren't giving them up. I said, no, we don't know who you're talking about and that kind of stuff. So mm -hmm. then I went over to the women, and I just walked around, and didn't ask anybody anything, just listened. 
because they weren't aware I spoke Vietnamese. It was unusual for an American to be fluent in Vietnamese. Yeah, yeah. And so they were talking around and I said, okay, Captain, I know where he is. I said, where the hell is he? I said, well, and one thing I was always, now I, I'm a pretty good shot with a rifle, really am, but most of the time over there, if you actually get in action, you're less than 50 feet away from the other person. Mm -hmm. And so I carried an M79 grenade launcher when I could, except it didn't have a grenade in it, it had double odd buck. So you're talking like a two gauge shotgun with double odd buck. Yeah. And short enough, it was like a blunderbuss. So I went over to the corral where they kept a um, water buffalo. Now, water buffalo in Vietnam hated Americans. They hated <laughs> Americans. I've heard that. And yeah. I, I don't know why, but they just hated Americans. We smelled differently or walked differently or talked differently. Anyway, they just, it was all over the country. Damn water buffalo hated <laughs> Americans. And so some people had shot water buffalo. Well, that's a big no-no because then the military had to pay for the water buffalo and all kind of stuff. And, it wasn't unusual to get busted in in rank and get an for shooting the water buffalo. For shooting the water buffalo, so I went over to the corral, and this water buffalo lowered his head and came right at me, and I waited till it was about 40 feet away, and I emptied that M79 grenade launcher right into his skull, and it <laughs> went down. And uh, so, man, the captain just came out and glued. What the hell did you do? What the hell did you do? What the hell did you do? You know, now I'm going to get in trouble. You. And, you know, I said, no, nah, you don't understand, Captain. And he said, uh, I know where the tax commissioner is. And he said, I don't see any damn tax commissioner. I said, you get those Vietnamese to move that pile of dung from there to there. Why the hell are you going to do that? And I said, take my word for it. And so he, <laughs> he didn't like it. I was just a corporal at that time. And, yeah, he was a captain. <laughs> So, but hell, he didn't have anything else to do, so he made the guys move the pile of dung, and under the dung was a spider hole, and that's where the tax commissioner was hiding. And you found him. And, and I found him, because the women were talking about him, and I'd, I'd overheard the women talking about him. Wow, wow. And so, so man, the captain was sure glad to find the tax commissioner. Wow. Have and you, we delivered him alive. We didn't assassinate did. him. We delivered him alive. Wow. So that was, did you do other things with the Phoenix program or is that? Oh yeah, yeah, that was, just, that was my first one. That was your first one? Yeah, that was the first one I went on. What just kind of tick off some of the other missions you had with the Phoenix program? Well, we primarily wanted to capture uh, what we thought were high-ranking um, officers or uh, tax commissioners or something like that. or. In, in the Communist Party, not not the NBA military, in the Communist Party. So see, what the... Uh, South Vietnam, yeah. Yeah, the, the, even the military, uh, even the North Vietnamese military, they had a Communist commissioner, and they told the military colonel what to do. You know, maybe it would have been better to divide up the forces into three and attack the deal. Well, if the communist commissioner thought it was better to just everybody charge at the same time, that's what they did, you know. Mm. Or, or if they, or if the troops thought they were too tired to fight, if the commissioner said we march another twenty miles. They either marched another twenty miles, or they got shot one or the other. Mm. And wow. so, and so we were looking for those guys. Uh, is probably is what we were primarily looking for. And uh, we captured some and, and ended up killing a lot of them because they didn't want to cooperate. There'd be resistance and yeah. then there'd yeah. be a firefight or something. Right. You'd be a firefight and then you then you do what you got to do. Yeah. Wow. Wow. 